A few weeks ago, I talked about a service called ChatLLM Teams and its more general features. But today I want to talk about its coding capabilities as well, because there are some really cool things it does that make coding a lot easier. For those of you who didn't see that previous video, ChatLLM Teams is a service that allows you to use all of the popular LLM models for a fraction of the price. In fact, it's about half the price of ChatGPT Plus and you get access to all the ChatGPT models plus a load of others too. There's been a huge push for LLMs in the coding scene. So from just generating simple snippets to writing uh, test conditions, all the way up to entire IDEs being built around them. And ChatLLM Teams fits perfectly into that with all the features I'm gonna show you today. If you do like what you see, then make sure to click the link in the description below to get your first month for free and then just $10 a month after that for access to all the LLMs and all of the features. I'm sure you're dying to know, so let's talk about how ChatLLM Teams can help you. The first feature that I wanna show off is Playgrounds, and this is actually a really cool feature, especially if you're prototyping websites. So I've got a prompt here that I'm gonna copy paste over. Uh, you can click this playground button if you want to make sure it creates a playground. It will create a playground automatically if it determines that the context is correct. We're going to design a web page for a programming portfolio, like the elements to update when hovered over to add some extra flair, set the font to Barlow, make sure to import it from Google Fonts. We're going to give that to Claude. Claude is very competent at these sort of things. And you'll see that it's, it starts generating the code. After it's finished generating, it will actually open a playground window over to the side and this will have a live interactive preview of the website. So you don't have to copy code, you don't have to paste it into an IDE, you don't have to open your browser or anything like that. It just appears at the side and it's fully interactive as you can see. So I can hover over these uh, bits of text. It's still generating over there uh, and they turn blue. If I hover over these cards, they raise up and then these happen as well. And the same, you've got some interactivity with these and it's it's gone full ham on the interactivity, but I did tell it to do that. So that's uh, that's good. It's listened to what I've said. <laughs> Once you've finished playing around with the interactive view, you can actually look at the code that it's generated. It does show the code up above as well because it's what it generated, but it takes a snapshot of it and puts it here. And then you can copy this code and edit it to your heart's desires. The next feature that I want to show off is code execution. So we're going to open a new chat and we are actually going to switch to GPT-01 just for the sake of it really. And we're gonna provide it with this prompt here. Pretend you have no idea what the value of pi is, estimate this value using the Monte Carlo simulation. And of course, O1 is designed to have a good think about something before it actually gives an answer. So we might be sitting here waiting for a while, but that'll go off and do that. And then it will uh, generate some code necessary to do that. And it'll, then it will actually execute the code for you and give you an answer. And that's how it goes about doing it. So I will cut until it's all done thinking. And then we get this response that comes back. And as you can see, it executed the code and we get an estimated value of pi 3.139544, which is fairly close. You can get closer, uh, but that's fairly close. We can scroll up and see that it's generated just a, a fairly bog standard version of the Monte Carlo uh, simulation. Uh, for those of you that don't know what it is, I will leave a link in the description for you to read up about it. But it is basically uh, a method of estimating pi by plotting uh, points inside a square and then seeing how many points of which uh, fall inside the circle. Uh, so it's quite a cool little thing, actually. So it's done that and it's given us you know, a step-by-step -step guide of how it all works and a bit of a synopsis of what everything does. If we wanted to get some more insights into that generated code, we could. So I could then ask it to compute the performance of this algorithm and analyze where, if possible, the algorithm can be optimized. And now it will go away and do that. It will use the context from before and it will give us the performance considerations of the algorithm. And it's done all that so we can see it generates quite a lot of stuff when you ask it to do this. Um, really rather a lot of stuff. Yeah, O1 is very detailed. So it gives us an overview of the algorithm complexity, the time complexity, space complexity, all that. And then it gives us a number of options to optimize the algorithm from changing how the maths works to using NumPy to vectorization, uh, using multiprocessing as well. It goes into details about that. Using GPUs, that's the first time it's talked about that. That's really cool. Uh, and yeah, and you can get a, a lot of information out of it doing something like this. And obviously it can do this on code that you've written yourself as well. So you can just give it some code and you can get this very detailed performance report. 
uh, so you can optimize it in ways you perhaps hadn't thought of before. The final thing that I want to show off is perhaps one of the most boring things about programming, and that is test cases. I know some people love creating test cases, there's whole careers around it. I kind of don't. <laughs> I find they just take a long time and having an AI that can do that is a really nice thing. So we're going to create another new chat and we are going to use Abacus AI Smog for this one. For those that don't know, Abacus.ai Smog is a fine tune of Llama 3.1, which itself is open source, meaning that this one is open source as well, which is pretty cool. So we can select that and we're going to tell it to create detailed test cases for this code using PyTest. Uh, and then we're going to give it the code that ChatGPT01 just generated. So now we're going to ask Smog to generate some tests for us. So it's going to go through and do that. And there we go. It's starting to create test cases now. So it's estimating PyBasic. It's doing some edge cases here. So it's setting uh, these PyProx values. It's doing some input validation, doing some accuracy validation, uh, and then an example uses there. And you can use these as a baseline to create more tests. You could also actually pass a series of test cases in and ask the AI to tell you uh, what tests you also, or what other um, edge cases that you may have missed. So that's particularly helpful for that. And of course, the really good thing about chat LLM teams in this context is that if one model is giving you JIP, then you could just switch to another. So chat GPT sometimes has a tendency to kind of mess things up. So if that happens, you can just switch to Claude or you could switch to Llama or switch to any of the others that uh, chat LLM teams provides and get a second opinion, which is often really useful, both in the context and out of the context of AI. Let me know what your favorite use case is in the comments below. And also let me know what your favorite AI model is. I wanna know what people's uh, favorite models are because it's an interesting topic to discuss. If you like what you've seen here, then you can sign up to Chat LLM Teams using the link in the description below. You can get your first month free and then it's just $10 a month after that for all of those AI models you saw in that drop down. And I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.